the key means by which the United States spectrum auctions and public policy can affect technological innovation and deployment in places like Sub-Saharan Africa is creates a model. And if I were a policymaker in Sub-Saharan Africa and I were interested in deploying these technologies and, and getting spectrum into the hands of people to, to exploit it, I would look around the globe and I would ask who got it right and who got it right by what criterion. And uh, the criterion, if I were in Sub-Saharan Africa, would be I want the broadest penetration of these services possible and I want the broadest investment into this spectrum as I could possibly achieve. And I would suggest uh, from a developed market standpoint, um, the places I probably would not look if I were making this decision would be India. I think what you're seeing in India is development of the technology that is achieving the first part, which is broad-based penetration of the services at really, really low commodity prices and very, very low quality. But you're not seeing the next level of innovation that's going to be required to bring all the benefits of this. And what I mean by that are education and healthcare benefits that are derived by these wireless internet technologies. And to get the, the education, the healthcare benefits that are derived from this, you need the high quality bandwidth. And a low price voice commodity service will not get you there. And so I, I think they're gonna have to move away from the Indian model and probably somewhere closer to either the Mexican and maybe towards the United States model to achieve that. And uh, I gotta tell you, when you think about developing markets, the opportunity for these technologies to drive education to a completely different level is one of the most exciting things that I have been attached to in my career. And uh, we, we made an announcement three weeks ago. This, it's just, it's just a, an example of what this can do and what it can do to the cost equation because my frustration with education is that the cost routinely does this. Daryl and I were talking. It's the only area in the United States economy that's been exempt from the productivity magic of the last 20 years because cost is doing this and quality is going nowhere on education in the United States. We combined with Georgia Tech and a company called Udacity and three weeks ago announced that Georgia Tech will be launching a fully accredited uh, program degree in computer science, master's in computer science, which today costs $40,000 Next year, we'll be introducing this fully accredited degree for $7,000. I think $7,000 is high, but we can debate that, okay? But we're going to introduce it for $7,000. If a technical credential degree like that could be introduced at a 20% of the cost type environment, why can that not be moved downstream into engineering and undergrad? Why can it not be moved into secondary education, primary education? And why can that not be exported to Sub-Saharan Africa? and begin to introduce the highest quality education programs in the world into these developing economies. To me, this is, this is world changing. This, this democratizes education and it is a major, major deal. It's a big deal.